Hi, this is Steve Behrens with Clear Comfort, and you're listening to Ask the Masters podcast. On this week's episode of Ask the Masters, Grant Smith sits down with Clear Comfort CEO Steve Behrens and discusses advanced oxidation pool treatment, AOP. What is it? How is it used? Enjoy this informative episode. Hello and welcome to the Ask the Masters podcast. This podcast is dedicated to discussions about the design and construction of water shapes. The hosts of the show are all certified SWD masters who represent the leading builders and designers within the water shaping industry today. Hi, this is Grant Smith with Alkaline Pools and Spas. Welcome to another episode of Ask the Masters. I'm with Steve Behrens. We're here to talk about alternative sanitizers and especially AOP. Steve, thanks for coming on and joining us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Not, no, no problem. What is the history of AOP? Well, it's, it's been uh, around quite a while. If you go way back, the, we can go to the earth. It uses the AOP a lot to clean air. So um, it's not something new or... Um, really that novel it's just the way you produce it becomes the key and that's what a lot of people are looking at now how do we incorporate something that is a fairly natural process into helping pools stay cleaner and, and clearer longer right now aop is an acronym what does it stand for it stands for advanced oxidation process okay um and uh, that's usually defined as the ability to create a hydroxyl radical in the water okay and hydroxyl is a Long term for a short thing, it's just one oxygen, one hydrogen tied together. Uh, it's a it's a radical that has a very high oxidation level, which just means it replaces a lot of what chlorine does in the water very quickly and very easily. Okay. Now, how does it work in pools? Because um, it, it, if it works out in nature, how how does it relate from you know, working in pools? Uh, how it relates in nature? In 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 pools, you're looking to get as much oxidation into the water as possible. Um, so the oxidation level in the water is uh, usually provided typically by chlorine, uh, sometimes bromine, things like that. Those are good chemicals to do that. The challenge is they have a lot of byproducts and they create a lot of downstream effects. When you put AOP into water, there's a lot of different ways people do that. Um, you have to create some aspect of either pulling water apart, in other words, grabbing one hydrogen off the water molecule, or you have to create other methods to, to generate that. Um, when we look at the different types of AOP, there's generally certain categories. The, the, the combo product using a UV ozone system together uh, creates some hydroxyl radicals. There's a, another category of just ozone itself, putting enough ozone in to create enough of an uh, advanced oxidation reaction in the water. Um, and then the last one is what we do as a company, what Clear Comfort does, which is just we directly inject a uh, excited oxygen in the water. We treat air, and then that goes in, and that cre directly creates hydroxyls. So we're not going around the... the uh, intermediate step and that's kind of the three basic categories mm -hmm. you see uh, the fourth is actually uh, one that's been around for quite a while and that's a battery in the water where you're putting um, basically a uh, two anodes in the water and you're putting electrical charge across those and that creates a electrical potential which pulls apart water and creates a hydroxyl radical a uh, little bit different to maintain, a little bit different way to install. Um, people have tried that for a while. Generally, those solutions tend to fit into a finicky category because they have to have pH very low to be effective. In fact, so low that you val invalidate warranties on heaters and things mm. like that. So, right. so that's the fourth category. Now a lot of people are using, they've been, they've, all these have been around with the exception of Clear Comfort for decades. They're not that new right they're just coming to the forefront okay and just so i understand this the, the oxidation process that that breaks the mo water molecule apart and then destroys the contaminant is that how it works you can have o2 itself can oxidize mm. um it's just how much and it's a scale it's kind of you know how strong is it um with with oh it's very very strong and 
Uh, monoatomic oxygen is a little higher than that on an oxidation potential scale. Above that are things that you can't put in a pool like fluorine. That'll kill people. But right. you, you basically have the ability to create the highest oxidant in the pool. Mm-hmm. That's what that does. Ozone is further down, and then way, way, way down is chlorine, and then below that, below that's bromine. So people have uh, tried to create different oxidizers in the pool. What it's doing is it's creating a particle that goes after any sort of things like organisms or, um, in a lot of cases, minerals in the water can be oxidized. There's uh, a lot of different things that can be oxidized, and a high potential oxidizer that's safe is a really good thing to have in the mix right and and i mean you're is how recent is this technique? i mean you said it's been around for a long time but mm-hmm. the, you're the system that's most common today how long has that that been around for because you're kind of newer in the market and mm-hmm. uh, the whole aop thing discussion is just getting started um you know we're really getting to, into different kind of sanitation systems for pools so yeah. so I'll, I'll put that in context of our experience in the market um we came in, our systems were being used in industrial water and other places prior to pools um, for about 10 years before we brought to pools. That was about six years ago. Um, and when we, when we brought the, the systems out, there was very little discussion about AOP. There was very little discussion about hydroxyls, about what this does in the water. What there was a discussion around was mostly how do we apply different technologies to pool plumbing? Uh, we looked at the problem differently. We looked at it from, there's, there's basically three stakeholders in this mix. Um, you've got the homeowner, right? And everyone focused on the homeowner, which is good. But in the end of the day, they can't get a clean and clear pool unless the service company and the builder can provide the solution that's effective for that. And so uh, now you get into questions of complexity. And, and so when we looked at AOP, we looked at it from not just how does it work. Um, we believe we have a better solution. That's Everyone will say the same thing. I think the real question is how does it fit with those three stakeholders? Can they manage it? Can they work mm-hmm. with that system? Can they deal with the chemical issues no there's no chemical free pool right there's yeah. no chemical free spa right uh, but the homeowner can they understand what is happening in their pool usually they're not taking care of it right um, the can the service company deal with this in the spectrum of pools they care for without being so far off the normal curve that they can't understand it and then can a builder put it on confidently and understand that they're not going to have a warranty impact. They're not going to have a plaster impact. They're not going to have an impact to what they've created in their product they've built. And right. so that's how we approach the problem of AOP. And, I, and I'm not sure I got to your question. Right, there. right. Well, but, yeah, I mean, I think you c- covered it. Um, you know, one good point you brought up is I think a lot of misconceptions about you know, with ozone and UV and even mm-hmm. AOP is that you, I hear this all the time from, you know, people when I go out to, you know, bid a project or whatever, they kind of think that these systems make everything, you know, chlorine free. Yeah. And, but there's no system out there that's totally chlorine free. Um, it, because you have to have, when the, when the system's not running, you have to have some kind of sanitizer in there to actually, you know, kill the contaminants while the system's not running. So I, th- I think that was one of the challenges we had early on as a young company. Uh, a lot of people came to us and wanted chlorine-free pools. Right. And um, we have customers who manage their pools chlorine-free, but that doesn't mean it's oxidant-free. It's residual-free. Right. They do things to manage their pools in a... Uh, in a way that is a lot of work. Right. Um, and you can get there, but it takes a lot of work. Uh, chlorine free for mass pool market is a very difficult thing. Right. You've got a service company coming in once a week, mm-hmm. at usually, uh, hopefully at that much. And um, in between, something's got to be doing things all the time. Right. Uh, what we found is there's the the way to approach this in is a chemical uh, cocktail if you want to think of it that way and the chemical cocktail for a long time has been chlorine uh, of different sorts 
um, usually some cyanuric acid, which becomes has become an issue as of late. And then um, the things like uh, acid for pH balance. Right. Um, it used to be that the pH balance was to p- bring pH down a lot. Now it's to bring pH, or excuse me, it used to be to bring pH up. Now it's pH down. And, and so when you look at that whole mix, that's what the, the two stakeholders, that service company and that mm-hmm. customer is so tied into that we can't control when we build a pool and when we create one. So what we focus on is the cocktail. Um, we like to, uh, as, as we start to see in commercial pools, there is less and less cyanuric acid being used, less stabilizer. Uh, people don't know. Many people confuse those two. They are the same. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but we use a lot of stabilizer in water today unnecessarily. Right. Uh, it doesn't help the end effect of the pool keeping it clean and safe. Uh, what it does is it gives you a reading. Mm-hmm. It helps you get a reading, and it's basically, in a way, fooling the test kit to say, yeah, you got enough chlorine in there to be safe. Right. Um, so we've been on a pretty big campaign. It has nothing to do with our product to get people to stop using cyanuric acid right. or at least yeah. limit it way down. Right. That's been a trend for a few years. And, so. and we've seen more and more of that, and we think that that affects how you build an AOP system. Because what happens is if you have an AOP system and you're providing a lot of oxidation to the water, what you might want to do, many people are shocking their pools in warmer climates almost every week. A shock is a much easier thing to do without cyanuric acid in the water. And so it's the whole cocktail that's that whole mix of being able to care for water well and smart rather than to just keep adding more and more chlorine. Um, what you know, our, our industry grew up around this whole concept of, you know, if a little's good, a lot's better. Right. And um, and that's a challenge. We yeah. we don't have a we have to retrain a whole chain of people who deliver our pools. It's not just the build, and it's not just the. It's all the way down to the service company and to that guy who's there for 20 minutes. Right. Uh, in Florida, it's six minutes. And, <laughs> Same uh, out here in California. Yeah, too, they're so. in, they're out, they're done. <laughs> right. And, and so how do we create a pool that is resilient, that's reliable, that the water looks the way they want it to look? And uh, we think you know, AOPs come into that mix because of that. Right. And, and there's lots of other things that are being used. Um, but we, we just see if you can create the more intense oxidation, then you're going to have a better, easier to care for pool right. down the road. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point about it. It's, it's just as true with chemicals as it, is, as it is hydraulics. You know, back when I started in 1994, it wasn't uncommon for me to service a pool when I was, a, when I was uh, running a service of a business to have like a two horsepower pump with two inch plumbing. Well, you know, now we know that was widely inefficient. It was wrong. It was dangerous. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with chemicals. I mean, as a pool guy, I would go by once a month, I mean, once a week and pour a gallon or two of chlorine in the pool and then just hope that would leave. Why do you think the trend is going more towards, you know, these alternative sanitizers, you know, nowadays? I, I think um, you're, it's a great example and they're not, they're not separate from each other. Um, it's, there's, there's the trend towards all, Alternative sanitizers is um, in alternative to chlorine is, is to scale. One is to replace entirely, and that's proven to be difficult because of what we talked about before. Alternative sanitizers that replace the majority of the hard work chlorine has to do means we push everything out of whack less. Mm-hmm. So, we if if we don't push pH off to oblivion, uh, like a salt cell does, right, or we yeah. don't or we don't treat it in the wrong direction, then what happens is the whole pool gets easier to manage. Right. It's the less is more simple approach. And, and when you look at where pools are going, people want a simpler solution. And at the end of the day, what they're looking for is not a pool that is necessarily chlorine free. They're looking for a drinking water level pool. Right. I mean, if they know it's the same water quality that they get out of their tap or better that's a really positive discussion to have and and there are lots of products that can can get there now not just ours and there are lots of ways to do that 
We think the, the key is to create the simple routine for them to be able to do that. Um, I'll give you an example. We do everything from portable spas to water parks. Um, in their commercial side of our business, uh, we see, and that's large swimming, Olympic swimming, things like that, we see a lot of use of um, Cal Hypo. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of use of Cal Hypo that is difficult uh, to understand because people think, oh, I have a lot of calcium in the water, I can't use that. That's not true. Um, we, we actually spend a lot of time talking with the producers of chemicals to understand how they react in water and how, they, how that mixes with our system. And so what we've seen is you can replace a lot of chlorine use by going to slow erosion Cal Hypo solutions versus going to a shock mentality all the time or a high chlorine dosing all the time. Um, and that's one way you're, we're getting pools down to half a part per million of chlorine residual because it makes it manageable. You can do that and manage that. And it's constantly there when you have double oxidation going on, when you have advanced oxidation coming in along with chlorine. Uh, so the two have to work together and they have to work hand in hand to make a complete solution. We, Unfortunately, in the pool business, there's a history of everyone wants to fix one little piece of the puzzle, right. and nobody's working on the whole puzzle. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I always tell my customers, um, you know, very well balanced, because you know, nowadays we have a lot of finishes that, um, you know, are different than when I first started. Like, mm -hmm. you know, 24, 25 years ago, it's all red brick, green or blue, you know, porcelain tile on there. Nowadays, we, you know, have a lot of glass and basalt tiles and limestone and, you know, all sorts and different plasters. I mean, it, we just don't do white plaster anymore. Uh, you know, with these alternative sanitizers, how does that, uh, it has to make the, you know, the finishes last a lot longer just because you're not dosing, you know, you know, chemicals in the pool every day, which slowly deteriorate the finishes. Yeah. The that's a, a great example of why people are starting to come to this is um, by pushing, by keeping the envelope into a normal range easier. And it, it's about easy. It's not about, um, you can't have a good oxidation level any better than you could if, if with your pH in the right range and your alkalinity in the right range and all your chemical balances in the right range. What people don't want is the pushing it to the extremes, whether it's too high a pH and your, your sanitizer doesn't work, too low a pH and your heater burns up, your plaster erodes, uh, you have soft stone issues like you had mentioned. This is about keeping it in the middle longer and easier. And, and so where we see those new building trends is helping bring awareness to why you have an AOP solution added to that. Um, why we see people putting, you know, we've seen builders who put a waiver in front of a customer that says, if I put a salt system right. on a pool, you have to sign off that I don't have a warranty on your stone. Right. Um, that is a, that's indicative of the problem that we're getting at, which is they're trying to, to create a solution to their warranty issue, not to the customer's problem. Right. The customer's problem is I just want a clear and clean pool. Right. And if you give me a better way to do it, I'll do it. Right. They're not... They're going to come in thinking one thing is better than the other, whether it's salt or some other solution. The, the, the real question is when they come in, have you built the right way to care for the product you've created? And um, I believe people who are listening to this podcast are very interested in that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Before I, mean, I came here this week, I yeah. was talking to people, and there's a lot of talk about what Ask the Masters is talking about because... I think we're talking about in a way that's not about a vendor talking about their product. Or right. It, it's let's try to make our industry better. Yeah, absolutely. Let's try to fix some problems. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we're, I mean, that's a great thing about, uh, this podcast and our Facebook page is, you know, education is key. So this is right. why we have you here. Um, going back to kind of, you know, you're, a lot of people are starting to, do you think this is the next trend in pool sanitation or, I, I, th I think it's either you can call it the next or the current. Oh, um, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you know, five, six years ago when we started this, no one talked about advanced oxidation. No one talked about hydraulics. Right. Today, you can open up every magazine and find it in all of them. Um, we, we, we feel like that's a great place to lead from. I think it's important 
for all vendors, mm-hmm. and especially AOP vendors like us, to talk about the category, not the product, mm-hmm. because we need to educate. Right. We need to educate people on why this is a total better solution. Um, you know, one of our builders said to me, I think I just had, I can't do his accent, but I think <laughs> I just had the red pill, blue pill moment. And for those of you who know Matri- the movie, The Matrix. Right, so, yeah. Um, it, because he realized at the end of the day, he got to the point where he had been told you have to do this, this, and this, and it led them down a pathway that boxed them into a canyon. It was, there's was no way out. Um, you have to back up far enough and say, what are we doing here and, and how are we doing that? AOP has a very strong role in that. Um, how you choose to do it, all AOP is good. Mm-hmm. It's a better way to add to a pool. It's a better way to take out problems from a pool. Um, whether you want to go to you know, our way of doing it or a UV ozone combo, um, there's all these different things you have to weigh out as a builder as to what you want to add to the pool or a service company. Um, we just, we believe that this pathway is inevitable because it's simpler. The simple yeah. solution almost always wins. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And we believe that's the, the KISS principle, right? So, it, and, and, you know, everybody wants it. We want it on our phones. We right. want it on our, our houses, you know. I don't know if it's simpler to talk to my house. Which yeah. <laughs> right. I haven't, Sometimes haven't figured it makes it that worse, out right? yet. Yeah. But, uh, I, I think I'm officially old now and right. I, when I say things like that. Oh, yeah, me too. Don't, yeah. <laughs> don't worry about that. But I barely, yeah. uh, I have an iPhone and my the only apps I have on it are basically three I added from the original and that's, uh, that's it. So uh, uh, I'm worse than that. Yeah. On the other side, I have... A billion of them, but I don't know what any of them I do, do anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I find what I like, I put yeah. it on. That, that's actually, you know, from a pool standpoint, it's sadly what we do. Yeah. We tend to throw things one after another. Uh, right, yeah. And that's, chasing yeah. something where we have to back up and say, let's build the, the platform first. Sure. Let's build the iPhone before we build the app. Right. And, and I think, you know, the customers want that leadership from our industry. We need to start to show that to them and not be afraid to say that was great 30 years ago right but now now we need something here's what yeah. we're doing and here's yeah. why well i think that's yeah you're right the problem with the pool industry is we kind of throw things out there to see what sticks right and you know manufacturers especially will just oh well, this is the great the latest greatest thing and then 10 years down the road we're like oh, that was the worst idea we, you know anybody ever had this message has been brought to you by clear comfort I'm Grant Smith with Aqualink Pools and Spas. We're here with Steve Barrens from Clear Comfort. Steve, tell us why uh, Clear Comfort is the number one choice among leading builders for AOP. Well, at Clear Comfort, we take AOP and we make it simpler than anyone else. We make it easier to adapt and we bring a higher level of oxidation to the water, which gives you a better result. And so all those things together make it by far the leading choice for AOP in the industry. And we're we're excited because our customers are adopting better ways to care for pools that create a more reliable pool for them and their customers. Great. Now, just real briefly, quick, quickly explain what how does AOP work? AOP is the act of creating hydroxyl radicals in the water, which is just a fancy word for oxygen, hydrogen stuck together. It's one of each, uh, basically a water molecule without a hydrogen on it. The creation of that creates a very intense oxidation load, which does a lot of work in the pipe. And uh, Clear Comfort, we do a better job of that than anyone else. Creating hydroxyls in the water, that's the main focus of our product, and that's what we do. Now, uh, besides water vessel size, what does it cover? Can it do spas, uh, commercial pools? Clear Comfort, we range everything from spas to water parks. So um, there's nothing, no flow rate that we haven't been able to address, and, and that's uh, the big difference between us and other AOP products, usually they're limited to a certain amount of flow and they're limited to the way they treat that flow rate. Uh, we have solutions that range everywhere from 35 gallons a minute and down up to 2,000 gallons a minute and up. Right. So you can cover the whole gamut. Even yeah. a splash pad would, would Absolutely. your system would fit a, fit a splash pad, right? Yeah, it was just up in uh, splash pad manufacturers adopting us right now as their base form of sanitation. Um, and, and advanced oxidation. And the reason is it's simpler, it's easier, uh, and it, it makes their lives easier because it's a more reliable system that they're shipping to their customers. 
Great. Now, there's a lot of different alternative sanitizers. What makes AOP better than than the other systems? A- AOP is better because it is simpler. It's it's leaves less behind in the water. It makes it easier for customers to keep their water in balance. It has less impact on pushing water too far in one direction or the other, whether that's pH or alkalinity or, or anything else. The biggest reason is it oxidizes. It takes and gets rid of things in the water, um, where just UV alone does not do that. Uh, ozone does a good job of that, but uh, AOP system does an even better job of that. Um, and, and our system does an even better job than the majority of those AOP systems out there because we create more of that hydroxyl reaction than anyone else we've been able to find. All right. Now, your products, um, how do you distribute them? Do you just go through or do you go through directly to the, to the dealer? We or go directly to the dealer so we can support their efforts in not selling us, but selling their solution. Uh, we want builders who want to be uh, selling a builder's product, which is the pool, but has the best systems on it to back it up. Uh, the people looking for that are coming to us, and that's what we're the majority of our builder customers. We're seeing the same thing with service customers now who have who want to take their service business to the next level. They want to offer a dis- differentiated product. Clear Comfort does that because we're able to create a tremendous amount of customer value by getting them to a drinking water or le- better level of pool. And getting to a drinking water pool is is a tough thing to do uh, and do it every day of the year, no matter what the condition um, we're able to do that and help customers get there. And, and that's our biggest advantage in the market today. All right. Great. And that's what we're here to do is educate yeah. people yeah. and, uh, any kind of new technology that comes out or something that's really going to benef- be beneficial to the industry, like your product. I mean, we're, we're really looking forward to seeing that thing come out and take more of a grand scale, uh, just cause I think there is a huge, huge, uh, area for improvement with the uh, water sanitation mm-hmm. and, uh, wellness. And I think it's moving towards that trend. I'm glad that clear, clear comforts, uh, you know, the leader on that. Well, so. thanks. We appreciate it. We are happy to be here with us, the master. So great. Well, thanks Steve for coming by and, uh, telling us about your product. Thank you. Thanks. This segment has been brought to you by Clear Comfort. Today's best water choice for you and your pool. Um, Is AOP scalable to any, you know, kind of water vessel, whether it's a commercial pool or a splash pad or a spa? It gets down to the type of AOP. Um, So certain types of AOP are easier to handle than others. Uh, If you have... Uh, for our company, we can scale because we have a very simple way of injecting. We inject an uh, excited type of oxygen, but one generally that gets into the water, and when it gets in the water, it does its job. We can create that from anywhere from a portable spa all the way to uh, two and a half million gallon bodies of water. The, the challenge is as you scale up, certain technologies are a little more difficult to deal with. If you're trying to start with ozone, Mm -hmm. ozone is an oxidizer that lasts longer. So it'll last 60 to 90 seconds. That means you have to either degas it to get it out, or you have to um, mix it in a contact chamber or both um, to get to larger bodies of water. So what we saw, ozone is not new in in, um, pools. There was a lot of ozone used three decades ago, four decades ago, and it was a good tool. Uh, but they saw issues with it in the degas, and, and so it created its own ecosystem of back-end solutions to fix the things it broke. Um, when That's one of the reasons why you don't see it too much in large bodies of water mm-hmm. anymore. Uh, it's rare that we see it. Generally, what we see is things that are not advanced oxidation, like UV, which has a purpose, and it's, it does its job of deactivating DNA, but it does nothing for helping with reducing the amount of chlorine. It has nothing, no effect really on, um, on, the, on other aspects. It can help sometimes with combined chlorine effects on commercial pools. What we're finding is AOP in the right way, uh, the way we're doing this scales very well to very large bodies of water. Um, I think our largest flow rate right now is about 6,000 gallons a minute. Oh, yeah. So uh, we have no problem there. Quite frankly, the other side of things you talked about with hydraulics on the residential pool side of things, we're seeing, thankfully, more people realizing, I have a pump, it's got this much energy. Right. If I put some bigger pipes on, 
yeah. I have a much, much better pool. Right. Yeah. And, and my, and, and running them, you know, one of the things we realized early on was people were misusing variable speed pumps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You give them a great tool like a variable speed pump and they run it eight hours a day at full speed. Right. Yeah. I know. It drives me crazy. And, <laughs> and so when yeah. we're out there, I encourage, uh, if there are any of uh, the pump manufacturers listening to this, simplify it for the customer. They don't understand it, but every pump curve is pretty much the same, which is a simple, a simple moniker that helps a, new, a, new, uh, a mnemonic that helps the customer understand without telling them what a pump curve is. And that's eight hours a day, full speed is equal to 24 hours a day at, uh, at 2,400 RPM. Right. Forget the whole pump curve. All they want to know is when do I get equivalence on energy right. cost? Yeah. When I get to equivalence on energy costs and they understand that I'm, I'm, I'm cycling the water two and a half times more and I'm getting a lower filter pressure, which we all like because we know filters work better. Right. And yeah. so it's the whole recipe that has to be communicated all the way up and down those stakeholders, those right. that chain from builder to service company to customer and back. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Totally agree. Um, you kind of went on about UV. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's all part of our alternative sanitizer. You know, what are the different types of UV that are sure. out there? So there's there's different types. In commercial, we usually see a medium pressure UV. Medium pressure UV has a better impact on things like combined chlorine. It has a better impact on uh, basically disinfection in general. Um, generally, they're built with uh, good cleaning systems in them, um, and they're but they're expensive. They're very expensive. Um, and they're very hard to maintain. You have to take the whole fish, and you have to gut the fish and put it back together. Right. That's a challenge with medium pressure UV. Low pressure UV has been used a lot. It's less expensive, um, but it has a very limited amount of time. It's working at full capacity. And so people think, well, I just, you know, the customer doesn't realize that leaving that UV system on there when the manufacturer says, clean the quartz, leave every 30 to 60 days and they do it every three years, there's yeah, not much happening, not much not light working. getting to the water. Right. And, and so um, getting a customer to adopt properly uh, means a lot of UV gets, like low pressure UV gets decommissioned in place, I call it. It's, they, it's left there. Sometimes the, the systems are just left in place. And if the customer doesn't take care of those systems, it's really key. So the the medium pressure uv is more effective uh, has more um, ability to to take care of loading and can handle higher flow rates low pressure uv tends to um, be used in relatively smaller applications and has less ability to uh, create the the impact on combined chlorine and on other pieces there's a whole other area I'm not going to get into, which is wavelengths, uh, and that's a religious discussion for right. UV guys to talk <laughs> okay, about. Gotcha. But yeah. uh, um, that's a that's a generally speaking, they all work in a relatively similar way. Right. They work for what they do when maintained properly. Right. Um, yeah. And and they, but the one thing to note is, as we're trying to drive to lower chemicals, they're going to consume. They might not leave any more ppm, but they're going to consume more chemical. Mm. So UV light will break down the chemical bond of chlorine and create a higher demand for it. Uh, there's a study uh, done uh, by uh, in Purdue that uh, Ernest Blatchley did about seven, eight years ago now, uh, showing about a 15%, I believe was the number, uh, compared when UV on versus UV off of chlorine consumption to keep it the same parts per million. Mm. Um, so we, we participate in things like the World Aquatic Health Conference, um, that's where we're seeing these trends right. shift. Oh, yeah, right. Th- things like cyanuric acid. Right. Uh, we expect this year that the new recommendation is going to be 15 parts per million yeah. versus down from 30 or whatever, 30 yeah. or 40, yeah. or whatever and that's, the acceptable range. Yeah, that's a huge change. Like uh, you know, 25 years ago, you know, the guy that taught me how to take care of pools, he's like, oh, you got to have it up at 80. Yeah, yeah. You know, 80 or 90 parts per million. And now I look back on that, I'm like. <laughs> You know, we're, we're like in the dark ages back then. But you talk about education being needed. Right. I mean, I was on a phone call listening to one of our dealers talk about, um, with their pool corp guys, talking about Cal Hypo. And 
they said the same thing. Oh, well, you got to keep your sayonara at 80 or 90. And we're like, they, yeah, there's I don't a lot think, of education yeah, that has right. to happen across Absolutely, yeah. the whole industry. Yeah. Yeah. They don't understand how well, how badly that affects, right. you know, the pool and the finishes and, and all that. So, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, the odd part is for plasters, they like Cal Hypo because it's more calcium in the water. It's right. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. yeah, it's, you know, everybody's got a different angle at the right. solution. Um, we're trying to figure out how to develop when we work with a builder, we don't come in and say, you have to do things this way. Right. Um, we sit down and we understand what their market is. If they're in the South and they're vinyl or they're fiberglass or they're, right. they're gunite or whatever they are, it doesn't matter to us. We sit down, we understand what that is because everybody's got a different set of needs. Um, you know, you, in certain parts of the country, everything's a pressure side cleaner. In certain right. parts of the country and everything is a suction side. You have to figure out the recipe, but water chemistry is not that different yeah. across those. You just have to right. figure out what the mix is. Right. Yeah, I mean, another... Um, you know, type of sanitizer is like an ozone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is all, I mean, hopefully you were here to educate. So, um, you know, this is so far great. Ozone, I mean, what's it about? I mean, how does it work? Well, I mean, quite frankly, ozone's the, the giant shoulders we're standing on today as clear comfort. I mean, it's, right. it did a lot of work. It works well as an oxidizer. It's a much better oxidizer than chlorine alone. Um, the difference is that it has some downstream effects. Where ozone gets in the water, people have to try to pull it out or use it up, one or both. And, and there's been some issues. The good news is the majority of parts that get affected or had been affected by ozone, the right types of plastic are now being used. Mm -hmm. So they're not being as, as effective as they were. There's still concerns about if you get ozone coming into a body of water and you have uh, bubbles running up against a, a plaster, it, it can be an issue. Ozone does, it's a very good oxidizer, and, but to get enough ozone in the water is a challenge for flow rate. Um, and it's very simple. Ozone is O3. Uh, what we put in is pretty much O1. If we're both starting with the available air, um, I can make roughly three times as much and about six times as many hydroxyl reactions. Um, in practice, it's four to five times. So there's a, a geometric advantage we have over that just ozone as a, as a gas oxidizer. Um, the other thing is the more, the more you create water that is more unstable, which is what a hydroxyl is versus ozone, the faster the reaction occurs, which means you don't have to pull the bubbles out. Mm. Um, so there's a there's a bubble issue there that we deal with all the time. But ozone itself is a excellent tool. Um, it has a, per, a great use, and we're seeing people get creative with it. I'm willing to wager there are going to be more and more people coming up with different ways to do ozone um, that are are incorporating it closer to an advanced oxidation point than just pure ozone alone. Um, but generally speaking, you have to put some degas vessels on it. Right. Um, every manufacturer, even the smallest products out there, right. recommend degassing ozone and, and destruct. So there's degas and destruct. So you, you degas, you have an off gas at the top of a tank usually. It goes off and, and they recommend some form of destruct on that. Uh, like how does humidity, you know, work in, work in with all so, that? So that gets to um, how the watch is made versus what time it is. But basically, you have certain types of ozone that rely on static discharge of some sort. And, and when you have a plasma gap or you have a, um, a corona discharge, if you have a high humidity, they tend to not function as well. So what, what we see with ozone is parts of the country like it more than others um, by using a, a, a more of a bulb creation technology um, you tend to get less of those variances um, so there are some the problem is there you have to create a pretty intense mm -hmm. bulb light to get the right type of conversion so uh, we we see that um, that the 
the types of ozone that are out there have a different impact. Um, the real concern always boils down to, in the end, whether they continue to maintain and replace the replaceable parts, mm. the consumable parts. Um, customers tend to lose faith over time. Yeah. Uh, part of that is certain, certain technologies decay slowly. So the plasma gap generators, things like that, tend to have a slow decay curve, and over a year or so they, they're decaying. Um, depends on whose it is. You'd have to look at their product specs. But what, when that happens, the customer doesn't perceive an on-off moment. They perceive, uh, it just didn't work that long. And, and what we try to do is we try to get people to understand that they have to maintain what's the maintenance regime that works for the, the technology. So plasma gap versus bulb versus whatever else you're looking at. Um, the good news about ozone and our system is we're creating a dry air effect, meaning we're not trying to do something in the water. Now, if you try to create a true AOP system out of it and you get to put it in the water, you have to put it past a UV bulb mm -hmm. to get the ozone to further decompose versus we're just directly creating uh, an yeah. oxidizer in the water. So right. it's, it's, I think it's really important. All of our uh, customers have our builders and service companies, they've all used us in one or two pools. They understand the difference and there's a certain, it, it's not really trying the technology. Most technology will work the way it was described. Um, there's some people who are not good actors in the business, but right. for the most part, reasonable companies with good brands do the right thing. It's really about trying it for their business. All right. Yeah. That does it fit their business and does it fit their model of how they want to serve their customers? And um, we spend a lot of time talking to customers about how to sell the total solution, whether that is the variable speed pump or or how it mixes with um, a, a filtration and how that works all together or automation. All those things tend to be a, a the product of the builder. And they build a pool. Right. And so what we've realized is the better we fit into that ecosystem, and that goes for any AOP system, the better off the customer is going to be because they're not making a decision about that. They're making a decision about the builder and who they trust to build the right pool for them. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Going kind of back to, um, you know, the variable speed pumps and setting the right system. Does AOP, can you, I mean, as far as like bather loads, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, I mean, can you, like a commercial pool or even like a residential pool, they have a huge party. Uh, can the AOP keep up with that? Yeah, so let me put it this way. All AOP is going to help. Yeah. The question is how much displacement of the job of chlorine, traditionally chlorine was using of some sort, can any AOP system do? And I'll use some examples. So one of our customers, I just came from uh, the National Athletic Trainer Association, meeting one of our customers is a company called hydroworks uh, hydroworks builds the all the spas i think they have 90 percent of all the major league sports teams where they have these hydrotherapy tubs and what you get is both hot cold plunge and then hydrotherapy with treadmills and currents and all that um, you get a lot of bathers in a very short period of time and when you have 100 football players from a from a college team all going through a plunge pool at the same time, what they want is fast recovery. And, and it has to do with gallons per bather. And so the scale point is both on gallons per bather and then total gallons being treated as they go by. So you have to look at both ends of that. Can the technology you're looking for be able to handle that? Do you see it regularly used in those? Do you see it regularly used in a portable spa? Can it, can it go across the entire spectrum um, well and effectively and, and because what happens is when you push to high bather load per gallon or you push to high body high volume of water or both um, that's when you see what the strength of the oxidation is produced by that product mm -hmm. and that's where it, does it directly apply to a 25,000 gallon pool with three people a week using it no that's a different issue but it does tell you when you bring that much oxidation level to the body of water 
how effective that's going to be. You're just going to use it differently in that respect. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, some of that's a, a big trend nowadays is wellness. Uh, you know, we see that with all the, uh, like sprouts and, you know, uh, natural foods and, you know, people, you know, the next generation coming up, I guess you could say, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a Gen X guy, but, uh, you know, the, the Y's and the Z's that are coming up. I'm the last of the baby. You're the last of the baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you are really old. No, I'm just Yeah, joking. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I said I'm the last. Yeah, the last. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're on the tail end there. Um, you know, they, they're really into wellness, yeah. you know, and they're really looking for something that's going to help them. Mm-hmm. How does, I mean, AOP... I've heard there, you know, with the micro bubbles, does that, I mean, how does, cause you can, I've even heard with AOP and now correct me if I'm wrong, we're here to learn that you can actually, they make chambers where you know, people can float in the water and it's like AOP system and it's supposed to, the micro bubbles are supposed to help you. Is, is that like true or yeah, so yeah. what's uh, the, what's I'm the story take on the that? Salt so. Takes the, so uh, if you're not familiar with it and you haven't heard about this trend, uh, the seventies are back, right? The, uh, yeah, the it's a flotation crowd, right? yeah, tank yeah, with right. uh, about eight hundred pounds of of um, of Epsom salt in the body. Um, if you run into one of these, good luck. Uh, generally, the plumbing systems are they look like a stalactites coming off the of right. Them yeah, with all this salt. So um, I'll leave that aside. That. AOP or any other sanitation is going to have a different effect. That's like putting you on the surface of Jupiter. You're you're so out of whack on right. the, on the chemical balance that uh, I'm going to leave that for a different podcast if, if you okay, guys want to sure. do that. Uh, <laughs> but but when you look at the health aspect, absolutely, um, people are very concerned about health. Uh, you know, we now have Whole Foods went from this kind of niche place where you bought an organic apple for seven dollars to being mainstream and amazon owns it uh if that's not proof of of this need for wellness and uh, approach to wellness i don't know what is but those people who want this they want the simple solution so think about what they go into a whole foods for they go into it for i took that food that box that fruit that whatever it is and I have an assurance that it's going to give me the result I want which is healthier organic less chemicals Um, most people are not way off the curve Uh, early on in our company we had a lot of people and it hit me after about a year wow we get a lot of people went through chemotherapy Hmm. and you know an oddly high number right and um, having had that experience in our family I can tell you, I started thinking back on it, and I'm like, well, yeah, we tried to do the same thing. We just tried to limit all the, the other elements in our environment. Um, and, and that person who went through chemo had that same set of, it's not an allergy, it's just a higher sensitivity. Sure, yeah. And so when we saw that, we see the same thing happening with the mainstream public right now. They just understand less is better. Um, they're not a fringe element anymore. They're not um, yeah. the granola crowd. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I live in Boulder, Colorado, so okay. we're not not a bunch of people, you know, singing songs to trees. Right. It's uh, it, it is a real, just pure health issue. Uh, we all try to exercise more. We try to get fresh air more. You know, we uh, um, we we all have different ways we're trying to get to a better spot. AOP has a very strong role in that because we do reduce, whether it's our product or anyone else's, we reduce the amount of other chemicals needed. And AOP is a better way to replace those chemicals because we leave no byproduct. Yeah. And that's the real important part. We also, for the most part, most AOP systems out there don't change pH. So we get this problem in our industry where we're chasing the tail on chemistry because we put one thing in and it pushes pH out of right. range and then we try to bring it back and then they we've now added turbidity to the mix and now we have all these other issues. Right. So what we're finding is that it's much, much better to incorporate things that make it simpler for the customer to make the claim reliable. So is it chemical free? No. Water's a chemical. So if you want to swim, sorry, it's a chemical. Right. But is is it 
chlorine free uh, the goal? No, it's it's really about can I get to a, a reasonable expectation that this is healthier water? That this is you know so a lot of people like this drinking water analogy because of that because they understand it. They understand that it got processed to a point where it's safe. Um, most people don't drink drinking water right. anymore. Yeah, right. But it's a, it's a safe thing. Almost right. everywhere in the country, with a few exceptions, is it not safe to grab the water out of the tap? Yeah, right. Exactly. That's a great point. I mean, yeah. you know, if we can make pool water that good, then yeah, right, it, people would definitely you know go towards that. So, yeah. and, and people like getting in it, and they like getting out right. of it. And, yeah, it feels clean. And, and so, you know, as an industry, I hope we start thinking about. You know, we get under a lot of attack, whether it's water conservation or, right. which is odd because we're a reservoir, right? Or, yeah. um, or, or we get under attack for the chemical output from our effluent, or we get under attack from uh, too much salt in the water uh, that which hurts sewage systems. Right. Um, we get under attack from all these things, but what we don't do is we don't focus on why people want this experience so badly. Right. And, you know, the, the Blue Marble and other books like that explain that really yeah, well. Right. They explain why people want this experience with water. Right. And, and we need as an industry to talk about that and then to live up to that promise. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. well, Steve, I, this is just a wealth of information. I learned a lot today. I, you know, I, you know, grew up in the old traditional, you know, pour a gallon of chlorine in the pool and morphed into the PHRP systems as yeah, I yeah. got, you know, more in the residential market. So, and we're um, transitioning more into the, you know, your you know, alternative sanitizer. So, uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Well, thanks. I think you educated a whole group of people today. Thanks. And yeah. I encourage everyone to, if you haven't tried an AOP solution, pick right. one, try one, see what you think. Um, we're, we're happy to help out. Um, one of the things we realized at Clear Comfort, if you've got a question about water chemistry, call us. Yeah. We'll, we'll answer it because at the end of the day, we have to create this entire solution. Right. Whether you're using someone else's or not, give us yeah. a call. We'll help out. Okay, great. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Acid Masters podcast. And don't forget to check out our Facebook page each week on Tuesdays for new episodes of the show. I also want to encourage you to stop by the Ask the Masters Facebook page and invite other like-minded individuals to join us there as well. Feel free to jump into the conversations and even post your own questions. We want to create a community which fosters learning and discovery for the betterment of us all. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Please be sure to subscribe and feel free to share.